in this mission, there'll be lots of Lincolnshire local landmarks. I'll be using a little nav map and you can download the route. We'll look cool as we fly the AV-8B and we'll do some strafing on Holbeach range. Uh, there'll be some towers and some typhoons at Coningsby and some bombing at 100 feet and more landmarks and an SRA. I hope you enjoy. I've already jumped into the cockpit and set up this aircraft as if I'm on a ground alert status. So I've made all the switches such that the only things I need to do are switch the battery on and switch the uh, engine on. And that is it. The rest will take care of itself pretty much. Before we go though, we need to make sure the chocks are removed and the covers. So the covers are that switch there and the chocks are the ones uh, on the outboard. And then you notice from the outside, we couldn't see a pilot and that's this switch here. So if we now flick to the outside, he reappears. So he's good to go, I'm good to go. Uh, so let's shut the canopy, start the engine. Canopy, battery, engine start. And there's no idle detent modeled in this uh, model, I don't think. So um, it's just the engine's already idle. So the engine should finish its startup cycle and then we're good to go. On the left-hand side, let's set up the uh, HSI. So here we go, so HSI. Waypoint, we won't have auto sequencing on the waypoints because I want to get to each waypoint rather than anticipate the turn. We'll stay to waypoint one to start with. And we'll probably remove the map because uh, I prefer it to be a dark screen. Ground track is on there. And then we'll get back to HSI. We'll also be using the TACAN button, top left. And I'll demonstrate the use of the TACAN for Coningsby. I think it's 48 X-ray. So that's in there, it's on. We'll click transmit receive on the OBS, make sure it's uh, at the surface and X-ray. And then when we get closer, that'll uh, start indicating for us. I'll also set the IFF to 7001 because that's the uh, required score cut low level. And I think that is all we need in terms of that. Uh, I'll also use the helmet mounted display, which is uh, the video cont rotary knob here. So if you dial that up, and look outside, we now have the helmet mounted display. So I'll use that to point some things out as we go flying. Okay, Humberside Airport, I've been here before. It's a very nice little airfield. As you go out to the runway, you have to either, you have to backtrack either way, but because we're doing a short rolling takeoff, uh, I don't need to. But what we do need to do is select V-Stall here. We'll go master arm to arm. We'll select the water to take off. We'll select the flaps to Stovall. And the nozzles are at uh, set the nozzles to about 10. 10. All right, here we go. Uh, seat, by the way, should be armed, and the arming lever would be here, but I don't think it's modelled in this one. Engine speed, a little bit of nozzles. Up we go. Gear up. Lots of excess power in this uh, in this version on Microsoft Flight Sim, so we. Don't need too much nozzles. Okay, nozzles all the way back. We're now in conventional flight, so we will uh, go to nav mode. So we'll take the water off and we'll put the flaps to... In fact, let's put the flaps to cruise. Oh, we're pretty low, so let's climb up a little bit. We'll put rad out in the head-up display. There we go. So our first waypoint is going to be Claxby Radar, that's what I call it. It's also known as the golf ball because it's on the wall top, highest point on the walls, I believe, and visible for miles and miles away. So if you're lost or if you're using it as a feature, you can be sure you can pick it out very easily. And I think that's it here. Uh, so this is a National Air Traffic Control Radar with uh, Wikipedia suggests 250 mile range. It's not an avoid, you can fly as close to it as you need to as long as you watch out for the other towers. On to the next waypoint, it's going to be Belmont. Uh, Belmont Mast is a broadcast and telecoms tower. Another massive feature, and you can see it miles and miles away. Here it is here. 
And just after that is the chain home early warning radar that was constructed for World War II. So lots of interesting stuff. And all of it is produced uh, either by Orbex Scenery or by FlightSim.to Freeware stuff. And I'll put most of it in the description below. Uh, whilst we're flying around here, in order to get an accurate 420 knots, I'm using about 1000 to 1010 RPM and just adjusting it slightly as we need to. And then with the auto trim function, I'm just putting the, the uh, flight path marker on the horizon line and it'll pretty much fly itself straight and level at low level. So it's really easy to fly this aircraft. There's uh, Belmont Mast and you can see the chain home in the background underneath the crosshairs there. Good idea not to cut too close to these towers because they have got guy wires that spread out quite uh, quite far away. And if I get close enough, they'll pop out and we can see them. There we go. used to be the tallest tower of its nature in the world, I believe, because it's a, a solid steel tube tower. Um, but at the moment, it is about 1,100 feet and second highest in the UK behind Skelton Tower. And there is Chain Home, which I think was the code word for the uh, early warning radars that they erected for World War II. Okay, now we're inbound to Coningsby. As we're getting closer, because it's picked up the frequency, or it's picked up the signal, you can see that we've got the bar here. If I click on Takan, it's now a, a live needle, so it'll point to the Takan. It'll give me Takan information in the head-up display, and my steering mark, the vertical line, is also uh, steering live to the Takan. So that's how we'll find Coningsby, pretty simple stuff. Interestingly, I can't manage to find a way of getting the course bar to act like a course bar. But we'll use it more for the SRN. I'll talk it, uh, talk it through some more there. The Coningsby is the home of the Royal Air Force Typhoons. 29 Squadron, the operational conversion unit is based there. I held there for a little while as a young whippersnapper painting crew rooms. Uh, and it also has the Battle of Britain Memorial flight, and I'll point both of those hangars out as we fly past. If I pull up my OBS nav map, you can see a little map, moving map, really useful stuff. So we'll swing around to the uh, east so that we can line up for the runway. But I do like that little nav map, it's got some great functions on it. OK, we'll flick to the next waypoint. So that's ready to steer to Hull Beach. There's my runway. If I put my helmet mounted display on now, I can show you where the, uh, where the squadrons are. So this is 29 Squadron. And the Battle of Britain Memorial flight is just behind it in that one there. Quite like this helmet mounted display, very useful. Okay, next heading is about a 140. I'll sort out my steering in just a minute. Okay, let's take away the helmet mounted display first and foremost. There we go, I can see better. 990 on the RPM-ish, maybe a thousand. And waypoint five, there we go. Waypoint five is next. And we'll put waypoint on there and that should steer me to Hull Beach. I told you it was gonna be a busy sortie. Lots going on. Uh, so you can get rid of this bar because this is still pointing towards um, the Takan. If I put in the next 
Takan, so it's out of range. One, two, three for Wittering. Enter. Because it's out of range, that bar will disappear. I'm going to fly over Boston. I'm not going to fly around Boston, I'm just going to fly over Boston. But while the scenery is otherwise dull because there's no hills, I mean, at least it's quite nice. The fields look nice, the towns are pretty well represented. So if you haven't flown around here before, there's so much to go and see. Definitely recommend it. Let's slow. Fuel, what are we doing on fuel? 4.1 on the fuel, loads of gas. So the air weapons range is there for um, live drops of four, uh, 3 kilo or 14 kilo practice bombs. They don't have massive warheads, they just have little smoke effects so they can track where they've hit. And there's a, uh, a dive bomb circle and some strafe panels. And they're there by default in your simulator if you want to check them out. But you can uh, adjust them slightly and there is some scenery available on flightsim.to just to zhuzh it up a little bit, give you some extra targets, a couple of boats that look like they're wrecks and take away some of the excess trees. So things of that nature. But ordinarily you do this um, first run attack FRA from over the sea from memory, but we're just going to go straight down and do a 100 foot pass on the range circle or the uh, bomb circle. And then we're going to peel back around and try to get ourselves on a 10 degree strafe onto the strafe panels. The waypoint 5 is the bomb circle, waypoint 6 is the strafe panels. Yeah, we've got 2.2 miles to go. We're now well inside the range. And I have the bomb circle. There we go. Bombs away. A couple of boats off the uh, off the shore. We'll peel back around this direction. Don't want to go much above 2,000 feet for the strafe panels. Interestingly enough, this plug, it's known as the plug, is actually an experiment where I think they tried to store uh, fresh water in amongst all the seawater. There aren't lots of plugs around, so I'm not entirely sure it was particularly successful or viable, but that's what that is. Very good feature. And that's a good feature to um, peel back around and go for the strafe targets, which you can see just around about here. Okay, I'm a little bit shallow, so I'll go shallow and then steepen about a 10 degree strafe. That'll do strafing, strafing, off dry. About a 40 to 20 degrees nose up. And they'll disappear. They've even got the range towers along the road there. It's really impressive. All freeware and uh, available for you to practice. Whole beach range. Good stuff. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll cruise up to uh, 5,000 feet. We'll put Barrow in the HUD. Put Master Arm to safe. Uh, and we'll steer along to waypoint 7, which is Wittering. Now you can see that our Takan has automatically locked in. So 24.4 miles on the GPS and Takan says 24.7, which makes sense. So what we're going to do here is an SRA, that is a surveillance radar approach. And ordinarily that would be vectors to final and a non-precision approach. And that gets us down to 620 feet AMSL. But even though we don't have uh, a controller working at this, at this point, I can still fly it myself. So that's what we're going to do. So, I'm not sure why the range is scaled down. Let's scale that back out. There we go. So, 20 miles, and I want an inbound track of 154. So I've got the Takan tuned in. I will set the course. We can flick this switch to VOR. I can set the course to 254. You can see the course deviation index deflects, but the needle doesn't change. So it's still not a course bar. It's still pointing directly at the TACAM. 
But you can see the course is 254, and that's what the deflection is based off of. That's kind of interesting, uh, kind of, I wouldn't say interesting, <laughs> maybe uh, useful. What is useful is in the head-up display, I've got, um, there we go, 236 as the bearing to the TACAM. But I want that to be 254, so what I'll do is I'll turn left and watch as that number increases. I'll also get myself down to 1,750 feet AMSL because that's the altitude at which the uh, finally approach fix will be intercepted at. And we'll do this SRA. Uh, so the SRA starts at, well, the um, top of descent is at 4.6 miles. We're at 13.2, so we have a little bit of time. Our bearing inbound is 247, so it's increasing nicely. And I want to be at 1,750 feet AMSL to start the procedure. Try and do most of your radar pattern work at 250 knots because that's the, the speed at which you'll start your um, or get your pre-landing checks done. And we're now at 254.2. That'll do. And 1,780 feet. Good enough for government work. The next event will be to configure the aircraft, get on to speed, and on speed is 10 to 12 units of alpha. And 4.6, so we're currently at 10.6. So we have uh, six miles to go. What I'll do is I'll put us into stable mode. That gives us the extra bits of information in terms of your rates of descent carrot and also the alpha on the left. So the double dot there is 10, so just above that is 12, just for reference. Okay, it's probably now is a good time to configure, so I'll go gear down, uh, flaps to auto. And around about 150 knots usually is about right. So got gear down, got flaps. pitchy. 6.4 miles. See the runway just behind us there, or just in front of us there, should I say. 6 miles for 4.6. Now ordinarily this would be flown as a continuous descent final approach, or a nominal glide slope. But I'm going to do a dive and drive and it'll take me down to 620 feet AMSL. Oh, I'll get myself a little bit off parameters. 1700 feet. Within 50 feet, I'm still happy. And there's 4.6. So this will take us down to a one mile missed approach point, a 620 foot minimum descent altitude. But of course I can see the runway, so it's uh, all taken care of. We've got gear, we've got flaps. I've also got that clicking noise in the background. I haven't found what it is yet. Come on, Sim. Don't stutter and crash now. We've made it this far. All right, 620 feet coming up. I could level off here, but I'll keep going down. Flight path marker on the threshold. I'm a little bit fast. Okay, I'm going to shift my aim point just 200 feet in, bring the power back, start to flare. Oh, that's one of my better ones. Okay, time for some VTOL. We're climbing, gear up, flaps can stay at Stovall. What is that clicking noise? OK, 
Okay, downwind will do about 1,000 feet, which I think works out to be about 700 feet above ground. Less than 250 knots required for our pre-landing checks. I'm a little bit slow. And reciprocal heading is 070, so there's my downwind heading. All right. That's working out nicely. So what we'll do, we're in stable mode already. We'll select uh, water to landing. We'll select flaps to stable, which they already are. We'll select the nozzles to about, uh, I don't know, about 30 here. That's largely technique. The 10 to 12 alpha is the procedure. That's what you need to have set, the alpha. Uh, but the nozzles is as required. But I'm by no means perfect in this. I've been flying the A8B in DCS for a while. And that is a different beast entirely. A lot of hard work as well. I probably need some gear as well. I always check gear around final, but I completely forgot that time. Cool, we've got greens. Got greens, got alpha. Approach looks good. It's looking good. Put the nozzles back some more. That's back to 60 nozzle. I find there's lots of excess power in this version of the A8B, so there's no struggle really to get it to hover. Nozzles to 90. So I've found the way that they've implemented Stovall in the sim. I know it's mostly a workaround because Microsoft Flight Sim is not designed for Stovall aircraft. If you want to fly this a little bit more realistically, then DCS, I'm afraid, is the way to go. However, I still really enjoy this sim because it is a little bit more relaxing. So here we are, zero knots and full right rudder. Very slow, kind of like flying in treacle. But if you're practicing, it's going to be very forgiving. It's worth checking out. If you want to move forward and aft, I found also that normally if you tilt the nose forwards, you should go forwards. If you look at my speed, it's still zero. So there's a little bit more realism to be had in terms of the helicopter flight dynamics that you'd expect. So if you want to move forwards whilst in the hover, you have to move the nozzles. So that's nozzles to 82. And you can see my speed is now increasing somewhat. And the you can see how much I'm moving the stick. It, it's fairly responsive, but it's still very stable. So let's put it on the ground. And I'll talk about this little uh, this little hack to make it a little bit more exciting. Okay, first things first. What is that clicking? So here's the hack. Very simple. Put the flaps. To auto, put your nozzles to 85, and now try again. Crikey. So you can already see <laughs> that it's very sensitive in pitch and roll. Probably a little too sensitive, if I'm being honest, but I feel like I'm having to fight it like I would a real Harrier. The rudder is still really slow to respond, but at least you are, you have the feeling that you're trying to balance on top of uh, a column of air. Don't try and do this with 90 nozzles because you'll just pitch up and it'll be hard to, uh, hard to control. And also don't try and switch from stovall flap to auto flap in the hover because <laughs> it can get fairly wacky. Uh, so there we go. So auto flap hovering if you want it to be a little bit more like a rodeo. And there we go. Completed the mission. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please like it if you thought it was good. Please, if you want to support the channel, smudge that subscribe button. It's free. It helps support the channel and it gives me the motivation to keep doing these videos. Uh, so thank you for watching. See you next time. Happy flying.